Hello, my friends. A very good morning. May God bless you all. May the Holy Spirit embrace you so that you may know and understand His will for your life. May He remove all doubts, fears, preoccupations, anxieties, perturbation, depression, everything, everything, a hundred percent, everything, literally everything that bothers you, may it all be removed by God Himself through the Holy Spirit with His entry as He comes down upon you, upon your life. That's what the baptism in the Holy Spirit is. When a person is baptized in the Holy Spirit, it is as though they would start to breathe the heavenly oxygen. We breathe down here the earthly oxygen, right? Those who are earthly breathe the oxygen from down here. But those who are born of the Holy Spirit, they breathe the oxygen from heaven. Remember that we said that yesterday. By the way, it's written that those who are of the earth are earthly, and those who are from heaven are heavenly. Jesus came into this world, became flesh, in order to give his flesh, his soul, on behalf of those who believe in him truly with sincerity, with purity, with fullness of heart. That's when these people are indeed born again. They receive a new nature, a divine nature, and then they become spiritual, and then they are guided by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. How can a person, a person, who doesn't have God's DNA be able to understand to understand God? How can a person who hasn't been born of God understand Him? It's not possible. And this is the problem. You see that Nicodemus, you know, it's very nice because Nicodemus was one of the main rulers in Judaism, a very intelligent man brought up to serve God according to the Judaism laws and the Torah, the laws of Moses and the prophets. He was a very instructed man, very wise concerning to the scriptures, a sincere man. However, he was not breathing the heavenly oxygen. He would only understand the physical things, the material things. He'd only understand about the religion he was preaching about, which is what happens to most people. They have a religion, they claim to believe, I would say they mentally acknowledge Jesus, but they don't believe in Him. To believe is one thing. To mentally acknowledge His existence is another. When a person acknowledges somebody's existence, it's like they believe and all, but they are not capable of embracing their belief. But when a person believes, they get married, they surrender. It's a hundred percent of them to the person that they believe in, that they are surrendering to. It's all for all. So, you need to understand that this is the great problem with believers nowadays. And I say believers with an inverted comma, because they are theoretically, they were 
meant to be like what? Like an icon in this world, a role model in this world, isn't it? Come on, the person believes in Jesus. Everyone who believes in Jesus is supposed to break through. They were meant to show the whole world, the unbelievers, the greatness of God in their life. But it's actually the opposite. These people, in their vast majority, not everyone, of course, they show, or actually, they bring shame to the name of the Lord Jesus. Why? Because they claim to believe in Him, but their life is totally the opposite to His word, to His will. Why? If they say they believe, they say, oh, but I am of the church, I do this, I do that. It doesn't matter what you do, what you did, or what you didn't do. Nicodemus was like this. He believed in God. He acknowledged his existence, actually, but he didn't fully believe in him. And that's why Jesus said, Nicodemus, you need to be born again. You have to be born again. But how, Lord, am I going to go back to my mother's womb and be born again? This is not possible. This kind of doubt, like Nicodemus, is what we see a lot here on my Instagram account. A lot of people ask these questions. But Bishop, why this? But Bishop, that? But how can we explain? How can we show the heavenly oxygen to a person that lives with their life based on the earthly oxygen. How can we speak of spiritual things to those who are carnal that still continue in the flesh? How? How? It's not possible. We speak, 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 but sometimes it's as though we are speaking Greek or in strange tongues that nobody understands. Come on, dear friend. That's why you have to understand that there are two types of faith. The natural one, which is that faith in which you believe in people, you believe in the instructions of the packaging of the, prod the product you bought, you believe in the word of the doctor, the dentist, the psychologist, you believe in a medication, you, you believe, but think with me. What is it adding to your life? Look at your life. You're sad, downcast, fallen, discouraged. You believe in everyone. You believe in everything. You even believe that you're going to win the lottery. Oh, Bishop, but at least one is going to win. I know, one will win. But, and then they will lose again. Because everyone that believes in this world are bound to fail. You see the testimony of the doctor, very intelligent, full of money, rich. But look at the situation he found himself in. It was pointless. The void of the soul continued. Because as long as a person is not born of the Holy Spirit, as long as they are not born of the water and of the Holy Spirit, they cannot enter, they cannot breathe the oxygen from heaven. I call this a supernatural faith. I make this separation. A natural faith is for those who are born of the flesh, those who are flesh. But the supernatural faith is only for those who are born of the water and of the Holy Spirit. They breathe, we can say it, the supernatural oxygen. Because the natural faith is this, you sow rice, you're going to reap rice, right? That's the reality. You believe in that. You acknowledge that this is good and you do it. But this faith, even though it comes from God and everyone has this natural faith, but it's not capable to change a person's mindset, to change their structure, to change their essence, 
to change the person's heart, the, the thought of the person. This faith is not capable of changing it. Only the power of the faith, which I call supernatural, which is supernatural, it's a faith that is above all things, is heavenly, it comes from God, that comes from the Holy Spirit himself. Then you ask, but Bishop, how can I have this faith that is supernatural? That's the reason why we have the campaign of Israel. The campaign of Israel is exactly that. We invite people, we bring this invitation to people for them to make a challenge with God. You don't know God, but you know of His existence but you don't know him, so try him, go with everything to the altar, put all of your strength on the altar, and I'm not here speaking about money, no, and properties, and putting goods on, on the altar, this is the minimum, this is easy to do, the difficult part is to put the heart on the altar, yes or no? Do you remember that God said, He said, these people honor me with their lips. This is easy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus. Hallelujah. This is easy. It's easy to pray. It's easy to sing praises. It's easy to raise hands to heaven. It's easy to dance in, let's say, in the spirit. But the difficult part is to put the heart on the altar. And as the offering, the offering represents the heart of the offering giver. That's the reality. The offering typifies the heart of the offering giver. For example, God loved the world in such a way that he gave, in short, he gave an offering to the world. Who did he give? His only beloved son. Do you know what it's like? The son of God, who is God himself, becoming flesh. This is a humiliation. And then coming to the world, submitting himself to the laws of men, the laws of wicked men, and to live amongst men, and having to bear the ignorance of men. Have you thought of that? And coming to the point of being arrested and tied, and then whipped, buffeted, spat on. Do you know what it's like? This, this graceful race of demon-possessed people came to the point of spitting in Jesus' face and slapping him in the face, whipping him, and then giving him a cross, a heavy cross to carry. And then afterwards, Jesus was naked. He was hanged naked on the cross, naked, totally naked. What for? For him not to just suffer, but to be ashamed, humiliated publicly. That's why he was hanged on the cross. And why did he do that? Because he was the living offering of God. God knew. The Father knew that this was going to happen. The Holy Spirit knew this was going to happen. But still, He went in full power. He gave everything. God gave of Himself. Would you be able to do that? I, no, I wouldn't. None of us would be able to do that. None of us. Especially because it was for demon-possessed people in this world. But God did it. Meaning that he showed with his offering his love, his love and the supernatural faith because he believed, he knew for sure that few would be saved. Not the majority, 
the majority will still be lost, but still for those few ones he gave his life. So the offering represents what the offering giver has within them. So the place on the altar, the sacrifice, showing what is inside of their heart, the everything, their mentality, their vanities, their dreams, their intentions, their personal projects, their desires, their will, everything they place there, it's all. On the other hand, what happens? The Holy Spirit comes to receive that offering. The Holy Spirit comes to receive that offering and to turn this offering an instrument of His in this world. But who has this courage? Who has this faith? Who has this desire? You don't need to have a lot or a little more or a little less. No. You need to put above all your heart on the altar because your heart which represents your soul it's your soul that Jesus gave his soul for he gave his soul his body he sacrificed himself put to shame remember that the sin of Adam was to disobey the word of God and when he found out that he, he was naked him and Eve they found out that they were naked so what did they do they covered the nakedness with leaves and what did God do no leaves are not good enough to cover your nakedness it has to be the skin of an animal and then God had to kill an animal remove its skin to make clothing to Adam and Eve now his son Jesus came and he was hanged naked on the cross on top of the unbearable pain in his flesh, the pain of the humiliation as well, of having to expose his nakedness, his intimacy. So Jesus was humiliated to the extreme. No one suffered more than him. Why? Because of the love of God for you, for me, for all of us, my friend. Do you think that he will want something from us? 99.9% .9 is enough to him. No, it's all for all. If you don't have faith to give your all, to put your all on the altar, body, soul, and spirit, then it's better not to participate in it. Be, be outside. Wait for the next opportunity. But when the person does that, Straight away, they receive the Holy Spirit. Straight away. Straight away. Why? Because it's all for all. If they don't receive the Holy Spirit, it's because they didn't give everything. Perhaps a grudge, a resentment, a little sin that they are still keeping within themselves. It has to be everything. They have to live behind their wrong life. They have to live behind the, the messy life, fornication sex outside marriage, they have to leave everything that the person does that is wrong behind. And this is hard. This is hard. However, this is the price. In order for him to save my life, he had to give his own life. And in order for me to then receive him inside of me, I need to put my whole life at his disposal for him to do whatever he wants. That's how it works. You who are willing to do that, then go to the altar. If you are not, then don't go. Wait for another opportunity, if there is another one anyway. Well, dear friend, when a person receives the Holy Spirit, they stop being an earthly creation to become 
an extraterrestrial one. You know this extraterrestrial thing that some people believe it exists, some others don't. Let me tell you something. I am extraterrestrial. I am not from this world. Neither myself nor those who are born of the water and of the Holy Spirit. We are heavenly. This is it. Did you understand? Well, we are explaining, we are giving you the information, but the practice is another story. All right? May God bless you all, and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.